In today's video we're going to be talking about Ludwig's angina which is basically where we have the bilateral involvement of the submandibular, submental and sublingual spaces and there is a suppurative infection in these regions. So it's considered to be a connective tissue infection or a form of cellulitis which is located in the floor of the mouth and it often occurs in adults usually alongside some kind of dental infection usually involving the mandibular incisors or it can also be due to some kind of penetrating injury to the floor of the mouth. Now Ludwig's angina is a life-threatening condition and this is due to the potential airway obstruction so we have the infection of the submental and submandibular and sublingual spaces so this infection can spread to secondary spaces and eventually can cause airway obstruction. So the signs of Ludwig's angina involve bilateral lower facial edema around the neck and the mandible. It can also involve elevation of the floor of the mouth, dysphagia, so difficulty swallowing. There can also be trismus, so difficulty opening the mouth. And there is usually tongue edema as well. So some of the bacteria responsible, it's most commonly uh, Streptococcus viridens or Staphylococcus aureus. And the treatment protocol for Ludwig's angina is firstly to protect the airway. We also must hospitalize the patient and administer antibiotics and fluids. There's also incision and drainage of the submandibular and submental spaces to remove the infection, the purulent infection, um, and also pain medication as well. Further along, if it's due to mandibular, central or lateral incisors which are causing the infection, they can be extracted and uh, another thing that can be done to prevent the airway obstruction is cricothyroidotomy or a tracheostomy and this is done in emergency cases uh, especially to deal with the respiratory obstruction. And in the case of the tracheostomy, it has to be done lower down to avoid the infected area